Hey guys, welcome to Vet Vlogs. I am Jax. I'm going to share with you something that we like to call clickbait, but it's not clickbait. This actually happened. I'm going to share with you a wreck that I had a couple years ago in this car, and I'm actually on the road where it happened, driving towards the location, and I'll point it out. So you may have clicked on this thinking, yes, Corvette wreck. I want to see a Corvette go into a ditch and explode. And most of that's going to happen except for the explosion. The explosion did not happen unless you count my scalp being split into two, which did happen. But we'll talk about that in a second. So I'm driving down the road where the wreck happened. And I'll give you a little background on the situation as soon as I get to the spot. And I'll tell you why it happened, what I was doing, and why you shouldn't be like me. So I'm passing the spot right now. There's a little side street, you can't see it, but you'll see it on the video, where I pull out, gun the throttle to break the rear end loose because I'm thinking power slide, and then I crash into a ditch that's right here. On the video, you'll see it all happen, and I'm gonna run through it step by step, and I'll kind of break down, slow down parts of it so you can see where and when things happened. But first, before we get to that, a little bit of background. A couple years ago, Motor Trend was looking for hosts for its video channel. Now, you might be familiar with Motor Trend's video channel, and if you're not, I highly suggest you go there because if you like cars at all, Motor Trend's YouTube channel is the best place on YouTube. They are doing it better than anyone right now. The Drive channel is very good, don't get me wrong, and I am a big Chris Harris fan. I love Chris Harris. But Motor Trend, the amount of programming they put out and the quality they're putting out now, is just phenomenal. They've got a regular YouTube channel that's extremely good and a subscription channel and an on-demand channel. Motor Trend's just fantastic. So I really wanted to be a host of one of these video shows, as you can probably guess, because I'm sitting in my Corvette making YouTube videos to post on YouTube. And I went out to this road with a friend of mine and I'd been filming some hosting stuff that was really terrible because I was convinced that I am very tall and I have a deep voice and if I said things like Clarkson on Top Gear, I would automatically get the job. I was doing a lot of, you know, in the world type of stuff. Not exactly that, but you know what I mean. It's pretty cheesy and if I ever, you know, get around to it, I'll put something up and everybody can laugh at how cheesy it was. I was working on that stuff and then I said, I want some action footage. I want some footage that shows the car moving. I want people to see that I like cars, that I have a Corvette, that I like to drive. And here's the kicker, that I'm a good driver. Well, no. My great idea was I would pull off of this side street that you're gonna see here in this part of the video. I would crank the wheel, gun the throttle, break the rear end loose, slide a little bit, regain control, and then move on. It would also sound very cool because it would give the engine a chance to rev up. I didn't have my custom exhaust at the time, which is a B&B bullet exhaust, which is a fantastic exhaust for Corvettes. And I can't see anything, but it looks clear. So I didn't have my exhaust at the time, and I know I'm horribly backlit right now, which is probably not helping you see me. I thought it would make a really neat sound and it would look good on video. So I pull out and let me go through kind of step by step what's happening and you can watch it either, I'll either minimize it so you can still see me talking or I'll maximize it so it takes up the whole screen. I pull out here and I gun the throttle and I get a little bit of a shimmy, but I am talking minuscule because my thought of what would create a power slide was vastly different than the reality. And I had done some track days. I'm even a pretty good driver. You probably don't believe me anymore, but I am but I wasn't experienced with hooning a car around like Chris Harris or Jeremy Clarkson. I break the rear end loose for about 0.01 of a millisecond, and then I promptly do the worst possible thing I could do, and I lift completely off the throttle. At this point, the rear end swings back the other direction. You'll see it here. After the rear end swings back the other direction, it dawns on me that I might not be able to regain control of the car because I began sawing at the wheel, causing the rear end to swing back around here, and then promptly put two feet on the brake about as hard as I've ever pressed the brake before. But newsflash, guys, it doesn't matter how hard you press the brake or how many anti-lock brakes you have pulsing away at the same time if your tires have no traction. And at that point, my tires were fresh out because I had been driving like an idiot. My tires give up the ghost, I give up the ghost, and the car careens into a ditch. 
when it hits the ditch here, the video basically ends right after that, but when it hits the ditch here, my head slams into the side glass here and splits my scalp, requiring seven staples. I was about to say stitches. No, no, no. Staples, where they take a metal stapler and into the side of your head, which is basically what it sounds like. I still have the scar. Seven staples to close the wound. So after the video cuts off, as you see, I'm sitting in the car like this, and I look down, and blood is pouring down the front of my shirt. And I think, huh, this is concerning. Now, I'm not gonna lie. My first thought, and I kid you not, was, holy crap, what if I get blood in my car? <laughs> the least of my concerns at the time. Front of the car was a crumply dumply mess. And my first thought is, oh no, don't get blood on your interior. So I wrap my long sleeve tee that I was wearing around my head and try to staunch the bleeding as well as I can. Now that guy's driving like a maniac. Should not have made that turn. It was a Jeep Wrangler too. Who drives a Jeep Wrangler like a maniac on back roads? That guy who is soon to be that grease spot on the road. Anyway, I wrap my shirt around my head and try to staunch the bleeding. There was a few cars that had passed by. You might have seen them in the background of the video. Authorities are called, they show up. I'm praised by the ambulance, um, you know, paramedics anyway, that uh, I did a great job staunching the bleeding and they didn't have to take me away in an ambulance saving me thousands of dollars, which is, you know, not really that comforting when your Corvette is uh, getting carted away on the back of a flatbed. So I go to the emergency room, seven staples in my head, and I go home to the wife none the worse for wear minus the head wound but the car was busted up pretty bad and i'll throw some pictures up as i'm talking so you can see what happened the front of the car the front clip and the little plastic under spoiler that corvettes have was pretty much crunched all to pieces the side of the car where it slid into the ditch the rocker panels and stuff like that were cracked and damaged, and so I'll try to find a picture. I had one of the Corvette when they were replacing the panels, and they took off the entire side, which was kind of cool looking, but not so much when it's yours. I had to take it in, get it repaired. Nash Chevy, thanks, you guys did an awesome job. Overall, I was feeling pretty sorry for myself. What I want you to take away with this, or from this, and why I'm sharing this now, is everybody who enjoys speed, who enjoys cars, who enjoys motorcycles, Everybody goes out with the intention of having fun. Nobody goes out with the intention of crashing. I'm not talking about the kind of crashing that happens because somebody randomly hits you. I mean, that's that kind of cosmic fate, unavoidable stuff that you just gotta be careful of. I'm talking about you caused the crash. You did something stupid. And most likely, it was something stupid. You've gotta admit it to yourself. So what I'm admitting to you now is that that was extremely stupid. I shouldn't have done it. I thought I was a better driver than I was. I decided to attempt something that I had not really ever attempted before outside of donuts. I had tried to attempt something on a public road that I had never really done before just to get a cool shot for a video. Not worth it. All the money and the expense and the head wound and all that, not worth it, all right? Not to mention, what if I had hurt somebody else? What if somebody else had gotten hurt besides me? And, you know, I haven't talked about it really because I just started this series, but I've got a wife and kids. You've got family. You've got a mom and dad. You might have a wife. You might have kids. They expect you home at the end of the day. They don't expect you wrapped around a telephone pole. They also don't expect you to waste thousands of dollars on things that you could have avoided. My plea to you is that when you are considering doing something like this, be careful. Go somewhere where there's nobody around in a big empty parking lot. Set up some cones and just hope the cops don't show up. But don't do something somewhere where you could hurt yourself or hurt somebody else. In my dragon video, I mentioned if you're a wannabe hoonigan, stay off the dragon. It's for the same reason, guys. It's for the same reason. You could hurt yourself. If you're a motorcycle rider, wear your gear. I've been riding for a few years now. I was late to the hobby, but I love it wear your gear, okay? I had a little low side at the Dragon on my old Honda and it was nothing. I bruised some ribs, got up and walked away. The Honda was scraped up, nothing too serious. 
that's that's what gear is for. If you're in a car like this, wear your seat belt if you're driving on the road. If you want to be more serious about it, take it to a track, install a roll cage, put some bars in. Because at the end of the day, there's people that want to see you again. And you would like to see them again. And I remember years ago, you know, college and high school, and I was like, I can't die because I love cool things and cool things prevent you from dying. Well, it's not entirely true. I watched a good friend of mine break his back on the dragon, technically the Skyway, but whatever. I've seen terrible wrecks. I've been in a wreck that thankfully was not that terrible, but it easily could have been. And it changes your outlook, especially after you have a wife and kids. So I'm telling you now, seriously, take care of yourself because we all enjoy this hobby because we get to enjoy it. And you don't get to enjoy a hobby when you're dead. I know that sounds kind of snarky and funny, but it's also true. Hobbies are only as fun as they are until you can't do them anymore. And I don't know about you, but I want to do this kind of stuff while I'm still young enough to do it. And we all say, well, you know, when I'm older, it won't be as fun anymore because I won't be able to do these things. You're right. But that doesn't mean you can't get hurt or die when you're young. So be careful. Wear your gear. Respect your toys if you have them. If you don't and you're thinking about getting something like a motorcycle or a sports car, consider what you need to do first. And guys, if you're filming something, don't show off doing something you've never done before. That should be the golden rule. I literally probably should have rolled down the window before that happened and say, hey, watch this. And it would have been perfect. And I would have had 8 trillion hits on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm not trying to make a public service announcement. I'm just trying to be honest with you. This is a great hobby. There's so much fun to be had. We enjoy doing this because of the adrenaline rush. We enjoy doing this because there's that element of danger, but that element of danger can change very quickly. And it could, well, it could become an element of dead and you don't want it to go there. You don't want it to cross the line. I hope you take that away from this. Keep your friends and family close. Take care of yourself. That guy just crossed the double yellow line for no reason. See, you could die when you were vlogging in your car. I don't play the what if game, nor should you. However, I do play the let's be safe and you know stuff like that game if that makes any sense you know what i mean the what if games like well this could happen or that could happen this might happen a meteor could fall out of the sky and kill us i don't get into all that yes things could happen driving a car like this at a dragon the racetrack wherever but you hope they don't because you stay within the limits of what you can do have fun but don't tempt fate that's a good way to put it and i think we'll end there so y'all take care i'll catch you next time Peace.